begin reading a new book of the Bible today, the first letter to the Corinthian church. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all those in every place who call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything you are enriched by him in all speech and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you came behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus, he shall also confirm you unto the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is God by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brothers, by those who are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that every one of you says, Am I of Paul, or I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ? Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides these, I do not know if I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not in wisdom of word, lest the cross of Christ be made of no effect, for the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish, but to us who are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom did not know God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. For the Jews ask for a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brothers, that not many wise men according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And God has chosen the base things of the world and the things which are despised and things which are not in order to bring to nothing things that are so that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ, who is of God and has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that according as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brothers, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for they, if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? So also no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words with men's wisdom, but with the Holy Spirit teaching us, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brothers, could not speak to you as spiritual ones, but as to carnal, even as to babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk, not with solid food, for you were not able to bear it, nor are you able even now. For you are yet carnal, for in that there is among you envies and strifes and divisions. Are you not carnal, and do you not walk according to men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? They are but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he who plants anything, neither is he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For of God we are laborers together. You are God's field, God's building, according to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, another builds on it, but let every man be careful how he builds on it. For other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be revealed, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work as to what kind it is. If any man's work which he has built on it abides, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defiles the temple of God, God shall destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, so that he may be wise." For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, whether it is Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours. And you are Christ's, and Christ is God. Chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so think of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by man's judgment. Yea, I do not judge my own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall each one have praise of God. And these things, brothers, I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, so that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, so that no one of you may be puffed up against one another. For who makes you to differ? And what, does, what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did receive it, why do you glory as if you had not received it? You are full, you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God that you did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were, appointed to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even until this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place, and we labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things to this day. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I have begotten you in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Therefore I beseech you, be imitators of me. For this cause I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which are in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and I will know not the speech of those who are puffed up, but the power, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you desire? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and the spirit of meekness? Chapter 5. We are reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We begin reading chapter 5. It is commonly reported that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned, so that he who has done this deed may be taken away from among you. For as absent in body but present in spirit, I indeed have judged already as though I were present concerning him who had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, I charge you to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore purge out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and of truth. I wrote to you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then you must go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother is a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner. 
with such a one do not eat. For what have I to do to also judge those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are on the inside? God judges those who are on the outside. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. This is Family Bible Reading Fellowship. We are currently reading in the first letter to the Corinthian church. 1 Corinthians, we begin reading now, chapter 6. Do any of you dare, when you have a matter against another, to go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set those who are least esteemed in the church to judge. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one who shall be able to judge between his brothers? A brother goes to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather allow yourselves to be defrauded? No, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brothers. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor abusers of themselves as women, nor abusers of themselves with men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful to me, but not all things do good. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both of it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and also raised us up by his own power. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What, do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body? For he says, the two shall be one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits fornication sins against his own body. What, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have of God? And you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This is Family Bible Reading Fellowship. 
Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband give to the wife proper kindness, and likewise also let the wife give to the husband. The wife does not have power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband does not have power over his own body, but the wife. Do not defraud one another unless it is with consent for a time, so that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you for your incontinence. But I speak this by permission, not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself am. But every man has his proper gift from God, one according to this manner and another according to that. I say therefore to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. And to the married I command, not I, but the Lord, do not let the wife depart from her husband. But if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And do not let the husband put away his wife. But to the rest I speak, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is pleased to dwell with him, do not let him put her away. The woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is pleased to dwell with her, do not let her leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving departs, then let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us in peace. For what do you know, O wife, whether you shall save your husband? Or what do you know, O man, whether you shall save your wife? But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him be not become uncircumcised. Is anyone called in uncircumcision? Let him not be called circumcision. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man remain in the same calling in which he was called. Are you called being a slave? Do not let it be a care to you, but if you are able to become free, use it rather. For he who is called in the Lord, being a slave, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he who is called in being free is Christ's slave. You are bought with a price. Do not be the slaves of men. Brethren, everyone, in whatever way he was called, let him live with God in that way. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment but from the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that it is good for the present distress that it is good for a man to be so. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you freed from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brothers, the time is short. It remains that both those who have wives are as those that have none, and they who weep as though they did not weep, and they who rejoice are as those that did rejoice, and they who buy as those they did not possess, and they who use this world are as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world soon passes away. But I would have you without anxiety. He who is unmarried cares for the things that belongs to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit, 
but she who is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I cast a snare upon you, but that which is right, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks that he behaves himself unseemly toward his virginity, if he is past his prime, and so it ought be, let him do what he will. He does not sin. Let them marry. But he who stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but who has power over his own will, and has so judged his heart that he will keep his virginity, he does well. So then he who gives in marriage does well, but he who does not give in marriage does better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband is dead, she is at liberty to be remarried to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so remains according to my judgment. And I also think that I have the Spirit of God. We are reading these days in Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church, and we begin reading today chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now as regards things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if any man thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man loves God, the same is known by him. Therefore, as concerning the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God except one. For though there are those who are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there are many gods and many lords, there is to us only one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. However, there is not that knowledge in every one. For some with conscience of the idol until this hour eat it as a thing offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak, it is defiled. But food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if any man sees those of you who have knowledge sitting at the table in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him who is weak be made bold to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through your knowledge shall the weak brother perish by whom Christ died? But when you sin so against the brothers and wound their weak conscience, you sin against God. Therefore, if meat makes my brother to offend... I will eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. Chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My answer to those who examine me is this. Do we not have power to eat and to drink? Do we not have power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles and as the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no power to forbear working? Who goes to a war at any time at his own charges? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat of the fruit of it? Who feeds a flock and does not partake of the milk of the flock? Do I say these things as a man, or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Ye shall not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treads out the grain. Does God take care for oxen, or does he say it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, so that he who plows should plow in hope, and so that he who threshes in hope should be partakers of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? 
If others are partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and those who wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so the Lord has ordained that those who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be done so to me. For it were better for me to die, that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I may not abuse my power in the gospel. For though I am free from all, yet I have made myself servant to all, so that I might gain the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, so that I might gain the Jews. To those who are under the law, I became as under the law, so that I might gain those who are under the law. To those who are outside the law, I became as outside the law, not being outside the law unto God, but under the law to Christ, so that I might gain those who are outside the law. To the weak I became as the weak, so that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, so that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I might be partakers of it with you. Do you not know that they who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? so run that you may obtain. And every man who strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it in order to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So then I run, not as if I were uncertain. And so I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I keep my body under and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached unto others I myself should be a castaway. Chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 on Family Bible Reading Fellowship today. Moreover, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither should we be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and 23,000 fell in one day. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted him and were destroyed by serpents. Neither murmur as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by this destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. No temptation has taken you but what is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, so that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, the many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not those who eat of the sacrifices also partakers of the altar? 
What then do I say, that the idols is anything, or that that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not desire that you should have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he is? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one another's. Eat whatever is sold in the shambles, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. If any of those who do not believe invite you to a feast, and if you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no questions for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this is offered in sacrifice to idols, do not eat it for the sake of him who showed it, and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. Conscience, I say, not your own, but the other's. For why is my liberty judged by another's conscience? For if I by grace am a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Gentiles, or to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, so that they may be saved. Chapter 11, Family Bible Reading Fellowship. We're reading from the first letter to the Corinthian church, Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We begin reading now chapter 11. Be imitators of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and you keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. For that is even the same as if she were shaved. For if the woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head because he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have authority on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man is also by the woman. But all things are of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it right that a woman pray to God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a shame to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this that I declare, I do not praise you that you do not come together for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must also be heresies among you, that ye, they also are approved, may be manifest among you. Therefore, when you come together into a place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone takes his own supper beforehand, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who do not have? What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. 
For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. You are listening to Family Bible Reading Fellowship. We are reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We are reading in the 11th chapter. We go back now to verse 23. We pick up chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many among you are weak and sickly, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, so we should not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone hungers, let him eat at home, so that you do not come together to condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, even as you were led. Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of works, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man for profit. For to one is given the word of wisdom by the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But the one and the same Spirit works all these, dividing to every man separately as he desires. 
For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are still one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether bonds or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where would be the body? But now they are many members, yet only one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, so that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all have the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is Family Bible Reading Fellowship. Each day at this time we pause from the busyness of life to open our Bibles and read together from God's Word. We're reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. We begin reading now chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and do not have love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not vaunt itself, it's not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, does not seek her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are prophecies, they shall fail. If there are tongues, they shall cease. If there is knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 13. We have just read the great love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We begin now chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no man understands him, but in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless he interprets, so that the church may receive edification. Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, unless I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine? And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, unless they give a difference in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? So also you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of sounds in the world, and none of them is without distinct sound. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the sound, I shall be as a barbarian unto him who speaks and he who speaks shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so you, because you are zealous of spiritual gifts, speak so that you may excel to the edification of the church. Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when you shall bless with the Spirit, how shall he who occupies the place of the unlearned say, Amen, for your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? For you truly give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you, yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding so that I might teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in understanding. However, be children in malice, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, with other tongues and other lips I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to those who do not believe. But prophesying is not for those who do not believe, but for those who do believe. Therefore, if the whole church has come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and if there come in those who are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are insane? But if all prophesy and there comes in one who does not believe or one unlearned, he is convinced by all, he is judged by all, and so the secrets of his heart are made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly in you. How is it then, brothers, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speaks in a tongue, let it be by two, or at the most three, and in succession, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the other judge. If anything is revealed to another who is sitting there, let the first be silent. For you may all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, 
as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted to them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as the law also says, and if they desire to learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Did the word of God come out from you, or did it come to you only? If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Therefore, brothers, desire to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. But let all things be done decently and in order. Chapter 15, we're reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, on this family Bible reading fellowship. Moreover, brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you have received, and in which you stand, by which you also are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, and then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brothers at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present day, but some have fallen asleep. And after that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me also, as by, by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and am not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And the grace which he bestowed upon me was not in vain, I labored more abundantly than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not risen. And if Christ has not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yes, and we are found to be false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up if the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then also they who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who slept. For since death came by man, the resurrection of the dead also came by man. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterward they who are Christ's at his coming. And then comes the end when he shall have delivered the kingdom up to God, even the Father, and when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he who puts all things under him is accepted. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then the Son himself also shall be subject to him who put all things under him, so that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If according to the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise? Then let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Evil companions corrupt good manners. Awaken to righteousness and sin not, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 
But some will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Fool, that which is sown is not made alive unless it dies. And that which you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but bare grain, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body, as it has pleased him, and to every seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another kind of flesh of beast, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the earthly is another, and there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory, and so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. However, that which is spiritual was not first, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is out of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As he who is made of dust, so also are they who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly, so are they also who are heavenly. And according as we have borne the image of the one made of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. This is Family Bible Reading Fellowship, and we are reading from the first letter to the Corinthian church. First Corinthians, we concluded reading in the 15th chapter. Chapter 15, we pick up now with verse 50. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 50. Now I say this, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, 
and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor is not in vain. That was chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We begin now chapter 16, Family Bible Reading Fellowship, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so you do. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, so that there may be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomever you shall approve by your letters, I will send them to bring your gift to Jerusalem. And if it is meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will remain, yes, and winter with you, so that you may bring me on my journey wherever I go. For I will not see you now, by the way, but I trust to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will stay at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great and effectual door has been opened to me there, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he works the work of the Lord, as I also do. Therefore let no man despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, so that he may come to me, for I look for him with the brothers. As regards our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come to you with the brothers, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he has a convenient time. Watch and stand fast in the faith. Quit yourselves like men. Be strong and let all your things be done in love. I beg you, brothers, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to minister to the saints. I beg that you submit yourselves unto such and to everyone who helps with us and labors. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for they have supplied that which was lacking on your part, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge such. The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. And all the brothers greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of Paul with my own hand. If any man does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. The Lord comes. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let my love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. That concludes the reading of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthian church. There were 16 chapters in that letter.